I am Mark Silver. I'm an author and photographer in Carmel, California. Our guest today is none other than the famous Bambi Cantrell. She is world-renowned as a wedding and portrait photographer. She's published three best-selling books and has earned countless awards and accolades. So, Bambi, welcome to Advancing Your Photography. Good to have you back with us. Thank you. It's really good to be here. Okay, we're going to have some fun today, and I think, should we just dive into it? Okay, so now let's talk about, you know, we we, um, we talked a little bit earlier about, you know, ways to set yourself apart. And one of the things that I try to do is um, I give myself a personal assignment at least a couple of times a year, you know, at least two or three, sometimes four times a year, where I, I have a, a play date set up. And in that play date, I um, create a theme along with a hairdresser, a makeup artist, just a day for us to get together and just have some fun. And I really love doing that because it affords me an opportunity to try um, some different things. It affords me an opportunity to play without having to worry about pleasing anybody. I'm just having fun. Yeah. That's really what it's all about. And if I don't get anything I'm thrilled about, eh, it's a day, big deal. It's not going to kill me. Yeah. But I, in fact, I find that I learn as much from the things I did wrong as the things that I did right. So it really, either way, it inspires me to um, to move forward a bit. So on this particular play date, um, um, we were working with putting some sort of floral pieces together in the heads of these girls. And I really liked, this was one of my favorite little headpieces that we did. It was just really fun. I loved the just the real, the, the texture that was, that was on this piece. Yeah. And in this particular case, I would like to fo talk about a little bit about the communication that goes into the posing of this particular subject. You'll notice in this photograph that she's got her shoulder up, yeah. bringing that shoulder up to the, to the, um, to the face and dropping the chin creates an emotional response. It creates a bit of an attitude, which I think is super important. Um, in creating images that are going to ha that are going to look unique or look interesting, look looking interesting is so much more important to me than perfection. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I always say expression over perfection because um, if a photograph is interesting from an expression standpoint, then you'll want to look at it. Um, if it's if there's nothing to it, then it's like meh, you know, yeah. and and it can be the best, it can be the technically best picture, you know, but that won't mean it has any. There's nothing to it. We had Scott Kelby on last week or a week before, and he was talking about how, how much photographers tend to obsess over things that nobody else is going to care about. Like, right, oh, there's true. a little bit of noise there. Nobody else is looking at that but you. They're looking at the expression. And that this is the thing to underscore. It's like that's what they're going to resonate with. It's not that yeah, you had a, no noise in the back, you know, one little portion of your image. Moving forward just a little bit, um, I want you to notice her expression. It, it, and when it comes to expression, expression is important in the context of what the image is all about. Yeah. So in the context of this, she has this regal look. The the clothing and, and her accessories are very regal. It's important that the um, the the face exude that same type of look like this would look so dumb if she had a smile on her face it, would be, right. it wouldn't match it doesn't it doesn't compute it's like what it doesn't feel good so i try to have um to create images that have um um where the the everything about the image is in harmony in other words the face is in harmony with the clothing and the clothing is in harmony with the background or, or it's in the same key and such Depth and dimensionality doesn't just work for pretty girls. Sometimes it's, I mean, for photographing anyone, if that's what it's all about, is we want depth and dimensionality. Whether you're using studio strobes or whether you're using window light, you want to learn to uh, identify um, where you want to place your light source or where you want to place your subject in relation to that light source. So, for instance, with this little boy, um, there is a big window over um, right in front of him and okay. it's higher up. I would say it's about three feet from the floor. So it's giving me a nice angle of main light on this little boy. Right. But then I had to place him. I placed him here in this particular spot because 
there was an open door at the end of this corridor, which would give me a nice bit of separation oh, yeah. between him and the background. You can see if I placed him somewhere over here, then I'm not going to get that separation and it's going to go from highlights to black. And I want dimensionality. I have a question now. So when you're doing, okay, you have an idea of obviously what you have a vision in mind here, but is it just sort of trial and error as you move around with your camera angle or do you have it pretty well figured out before you even, uh, you know, get into setting up tripods and whatnot? I would probably say yes and no. Yeah. I have a rough idea of what I want to accomplish, but I don't like to put blinders on my eyes and, and make it a rigid experience, a formula experience. Yeah. Yeah. I want it to be loose and that I can go with the flow. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, let's say I'm photographing a little child like this. And in my head, in my perfect Bambi universe, we're going to go from this set to this set and this child's going to do everything that I want them to do and they're going to behave and sit still and perfect, it's all right? going to come together just perfectly right it always works well that, that never happens yeah so it's been my experience that as long as the subject is having a good time they'll love their pictures but if you make the experience so excruciatingly difficult and you get amazing pictures but the subject hated the experience Yikes! It, it is awful and they'll never have you back yeah. um i know firsthand about that because i had a wedding one time where i um tried to put into practice many different concepts that i had learned in a workshop and so i had all these great ideas and i literally worked opposed to a with a bride on her wedding day mind you for probably 25 minutes a pose, a single pose to get it perfect. Well, I found out that this was such an unpleasant experience. The photograph was amazing, but the client hated the experience so much that they hated it. They, uh, they would not refer me. And so that's really the bottom line is you have to think about when it comes to clients, what is in the best interest of the client? Do they know what perfection looks like? Do they care about all those accolades? And I'm going to tell you, in my 30 years of experience, I've never had a single client hire me because I'm a master photographer. Right. They've never hired me because I'm a triple master. They never even asked that question. They either love what you do, they like your personality, and they think that you could be a good fit, or they don't. And so I, I'm not, um, I, I participate in competitions. Um, I, I enjoy it for myself but I don't shoot client work for competition because it's been my experience. I have to be in the moment for that particular subject and I want to create images that, that they go, wow, you caught my spirit. Thank you for your generosity. These are awesome tips. These are things that, again, any of us can use and should. I'm glad I could help and I hope you have a great day. You too. Tell your friends share the video and subscribe. If you haven't already done that, please do subscribe so you don't miss any of our new episodes. And last but not least, and you can say this with me, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.